Welcome to the RD2B podcast. Each week we sit down with a different registered dietitian nutritionist to showcase the diversity of opportunity in the dietetics profession. Our aim is to dismantle the notion that there is a traditional career path. I'm Carl Barnes, the registered dietitian behind the scenes of RD2B. And I am Jenna Warnock, the RD2B host. Our RD guests share their stories, career paths, and advice to help students like us succeed in the profession. Welcome back to another week of the RDP podcast. I'm your host, Jenna Warnock, and today we're sitting down with Dr. Maria Morgan Bakke with the Viterbo Dietetic Internship. We're super excited to feature her program, and she has a lot of great stuff to have for us. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. And so the first question that we want to get started off with is how did you get your position as program director? Yeah, so I... um was working at the Mayo Clinic um, doing my postdoctoral fellowship, but I knew that I wanted to work at a university, um, a smaller university setting where I could really get to know like students and interns. And the position became available um, at Futurbo for a professor position that would eventually move into um, the dietetic internship director role. So um, I, my second year at Futurbo, I what became the dietetic internship program director and and was also able to continue teaching courses as well. Awesome. And so it was good that you kind of had a good foundation with the turbo before going into that position, because I'm sure that made it pretty comfortable to fulfill. Absolutely. And so on average, whenever students apply to your program, how many typically apply and then how many typically get accepted? Yeah, so we have recent historically we've accepted about 12 to 16 interns, but this fall for the very first year we started offering three distinct tracks for our dietetic internship and so now we can accept up to 26 interns. Um, First round, we typically get about 40 applications and second round we typically get like 200 um, applications. Oh, wow. And then now that you've offered those three tracks, we'll definitely go more into those tracks. But do you know, on average, how many students get accepted into each track? So this year, I mean, our first year, um, it was kind of an even, we, I think we have about five in the dietetic internship track alone, um, about 10 in the dietetic internship non-thesis masters, and about six in the uh, dietetic internship plus the thesis masters. We have some wiggle room. We don't necessarily need to, um, like, have an even distribution between the tracks for when for when stu- um, interns are applying. So um, we just can accept up to 26 total. Awesome. And it's good that it's pretty evenly spread. And I'm glad that you mentioned the different um, tracks. And so can we kind of dive a little bit more deeper into those different tracks? First, starting with what prompted your program to uh, offer both a non-thesis and thesis option? Yeah, we were finding that some students really love research and wanted to do that thesis option um, and be able to kind of dive into that, add that to their resume. And other students were like, "Mm, research isn't really my thing, but I want a master's degree. And so um, with that track, they can take the graduate level courses without having to really worry about doing that thesis project. Mm -hmm, Definitely. And that kind of also opens up a bigger pool of certain applicants and kind of allowing more opportunity for your students. And so the program is distance. And a really great thing that you guys mentioned kind of before this interview is that you guys um, choose the sites for your students. And I think that that's super interesting. And so can you kind of describe the process that you guys do for selecting preceptors for students? Yeah, so we have a clinical placement coordinator, Jamie Weber. So when interns are matched to our program, Jamie reaches out to them and says, okay, so where do you want to do your internship geographically? (laughs) So, you know, do you want to be in Wisconsin or California, you know, or Florida or wherever it may be? And then what sort of areas are you interested in? You know, do you really want to make sure that you have a rotation focused on sports nutrition 
or on pediatrics, um, you know, maybe you really want to be at WIC. So she'll get kind of your areas of interest and then, of course, where you want to be living. And then she'll get a list of potential sites where you could rotate and send those to you and then connect you with the preceptors. Um, so what, what makes us really unique is that we're a distance site, but most distance sites require you to find your own preceptors and your own sites and we do that work for you yeah and I think that's great and honestly one thing that I kind of came to my mind while you were talking about that is what made you guys decide to take that extra step and find the preceptors for students it's a lot of work <laughs> to find <laughs> to find sites and preceptors and it seems like I mean some folks are are really open to like students reaching out but it seems like it can be helpful if you've got someone affiliated with an internship with the university that's making that initial contact with the preceptors, then they know like, okay, you've got a set program. You take the guesswork out of how they're going to meet their hours and their competencies for, for the preceptor. And it seems like they're more receptive than maybe just a student reaching out and saying like, hey, can I rotate with you? Yeah, definitely. And it kind of gets rid of that worry of a cold call and definitely kind of seeing, and it's not like we aren't professionals, but definitely having a dietetics professional communicating with a fellow dietetics professional. It's it's almost like this instead of going just kind of up the ladder and that kind of fear of talking to um, a dietitian. But one thing as well is, and that you mentioned, is your clinical placement coordinator, she does communicate with the students to see what their preferences are for the sites and like what specific um, type of dietetics they want to go into with that uh, rotation. But can you kind of explain the timeline of um, the communication that your clinical placement coordinator has with students and um, with the preceptors as well? So kind of how that triangle works prior to the rotation, like how the preparation is. Yeah, as soon as possible, we get we get to work with that. Um, so we do a priority um, application in the fall for our internship that normally occurs um, the beginning of November. So if you submit a priority application, Jamie will actually reach out to you in December and say, okay, let's start thinking about where you wanna be in the end of August. If you're doing the spring match, um, you find out, of course, the beginning of April, and then Jamie will, again, within like a week of being matched to our program, will reach out and say, okay, you know, where are you seeing yourself? And then you generally know anywhere, depending on when you're officially um, matched to our program, you know anywhere from um, six weeks to, to six months um, in advance where you're, you're going to be placed. Awesome. And so that's definitely a lot of good preparation, even with that range of knowing what you're getting into. And so with the title of clinical placement coordinator, you have clinical in that name. And so um, for me, that makes me think of, oh, the three different types of sites you need, clinical, food service, and community. And so even with that title, do they still find the rotations for all required sites? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. So we make sure you've got all, all three of those um, completed in the year long internship. Awesome. And so then another super unique thing that your program offers is a last rotation to Spain. And so I haven't seen any other programs do something like this that's pretty unique. And so can you also, can we first start, since you guys now have three different tracks, how this rotation would look like with those three different tracks or if it's different by any means? Yeah, so you can take um, the Spain rotation that runs um, mid-May to the beginning of June. Like you said, it's the final rotation, regardless of which track you're in. Um, it's a little bit more attractive to those that are in track two and three, because not only does it count as your final rotation, but it also counts as a graduate elective course. So if you are doing a master's degree, it's it, you get more bang for your buck um, that way, but we do have some interns this year that are doing track one and they're they're going on the doing the Spain rotation just because maybe they didn't get an opportunity to um, study abroad in their undergrad and so this is kind of like their last chance to do it or they, they may be very interested in sports nutrition. Um, we work with professional athletes in Spain for that rotation. Um, 
professional from, you know, professional just within Spain, as well as Olympic athletes. And so um, those that are interested in sports nutrition are really interested in this rotation. We also work with culinary students over there. And so that's what we sort of how we start the rotation is we work with culinary students. Um, we learn how to prepare the traditional Spanish dishes. And then once they sort of have that understanding of, of you know, what a Spanish Mediterranean diet looks like, then we go and work with the athletes and they can provide nutrition counseling based off of not only sports nutrition, but then keeping in mind what they know about the traditional Spanish diet. Yeah, and I think that's a great blend of sports nutrition, culinary nutrition, and then that nutrition counseling, as well as cultural nutrition. So you definitely check a lot of great boxes with that experience. And so you did mention how with track two and three, that's the non-thesis and thesis option, correct? Mm -hmm. And so that's like one added benefit of them getting more bang for their buck, but also talking about fees or things like that. Do you know, like any additional costs or things that this rotation has? Yep. So there is a, like a trip fee that goes with that. Um, it varies from year to year based off of like what flight costs are going to be and, and cost of living and things. It's generally about $4,000. That includes your airfare. It includes your housing for the three weeks that we're there. You stay with a Spanish family. It includes all of your meals. Um, it includes your laundry once a week, and then it also includes all of our travel within Spain. So we aren't just working like the whole time we're there and doing nutrition counseling. We also travel to a few different cities within Spain, and we learn about the historical and the cultural landmarks as well. Um, and we end the trip with a day at the beach. Um, so all of those things are are included in that fee. Yeah, and I think that's great because definitely after hearing that it's not only a bang for your buck for uh master students but just for any of the students that do apply to go on that trip and so how many students do you see and i uh know uh it might be different from the tracks and everything but about how many students participate in this trip on average about 14 to 16 students Awesome. Okay. And um, I'm sure that the Spain trip might be one of the students' favorite part of the program, but are, is there a common theme of maybe other things that students like about the program or just things that you've heard of over the years? I think the common theme that we always hear is the interns really appreciate that we individualize the program to them. Um, making We've officially made it more of a distance program, but that's actually not new to us. We've done that for years. Um, we've worked with interns to figure out what their interests are and sort of tailored the program to meet their career goals. Um, and that's part of the reason why we decided, ah, why not just have a distance program? Because we're used to sending interns all over the country. Um, and so I think that's really what interns, we get to know them. We get to know their career goals and we make sure that the internship fits really what they're looking for. Yeah, and I can definitely see that as a testament with the clinical placement coordinator. Like one of the first things, it's not just, oh, where do you want to be geographically, but it's also like, what are your interests? What specific thing do you want to get more knowledge about in dietetics? And I think that that's a really, that was one of the big things that I noted whenever you mentioned what the clinical placement coordinator does is it's that one extra step of making sure that the student gets the most out of their rotation, regardless of it being distance. Because I know personally, um, especially with the graduate um requirement in 2024, internships, you want to save as much money as you can. So distance is looking a whole lot more like ideal just for saving money, living where it's comfortable, where you know, but um, it's really great that you don't have to sacrifice anything with that comes with distance of maybe, oh, I'm only doing this rotation because it's all I have, or, you know, just kind of feeling like that's your only option. So I think it's really great that you have that for your students. Thanks. And then um, for the types of students that you have mentioned, like, oh, sports, uh, nutrition counseling, cultural nutrition, you have mentioned a couple of like topics and things that a student would get involved with. But what typical like types of students apply to your program, like if they have certain interests or personalities or things like that? Yeah, you know, I think it's a variety. Um, we have really strong sports nutrition placements. Um, we always send students to UW-Madison. Um, we send them to Louisville. So 
uh, quite a few like D1. Um, we have interns with the Minnesota Vikings. Um, so like professional level um, sports nutrition as well. So I think we get a lot of those types of applications, but then like you're talking about, um, it's really hard if you need to be site specific, right? So if you, if you, whether financially or family or what have you, if you need to stay in a certain area of the country, I think we get a lot of those students as well. Um, because, you know, like you said, you can't just get up and move for an internship. Um, and so that, that makes it a lot more feasible for more students. Mm -hmm. But it's nice that you still kind of have been able to see the specific types of students that you're helping towards that RD credential, whether it be sports or whether it be location, you're kind of able to work with whatever student you get that comes through that door, which I think is really nice. And one thing we did talk about uh, students favorite part of the program, but I do think another important aspect is what either you or the faculty members most favorite part of the program is because you guys are just as important as the students that are doing it. Uh, my favorite part, so I travel on the Spain final rotation, and we have what we lovingly refer to at the beginning of the internship um, is called boot camp. And so we we have MNT lectures, community nutrition lectures, we do tons of case studies, um, really prepping you for your rotations. And so I see you when you start the internship and like how fresh you are and like helping you along those case studies. And then I see when you finish your internship and see you counseling these professional athletes. And it's just amazing to me to see the growth throughout the internship program, to see like start to finish. You guys are like comfortable. You're ready to be dietitians. You like, you know, you're leading these counseling sessions with athletes basically on your own. Um, so to me, that's the most fulfilling part is to see the growth in such a like kind of a short period of time. Yeah, and I think that could also be a really great note of confidence for people applying to internships, like being, because definitely imposter syndrome is something that definitely circulates in the dietetics profession. And so I think having a student hear that, that's applying for an internship, I'm sure a lot of us are worried, oh, will I even be ready after an internship? Or will I even be enough to become a dietitian? But I think you saying that of what you see your students experience in just that three week period, I think it really is a testament to show so, hey, even in a short period of time, you can really grow a lot if you're in the right position. And so I think that's a really powerful thing that you said. Mm -hmm. And so what advice, because I'm sure um, a lot of students are kind of nervous about 2024 or just kind of what the future holds with dietetics. And so what advice would you give students interested in applying to your program or just any programs in the future? Yeah, I mean, so with the graduate requirement, I would like strongly encourage you to do a dietetic internship where you can get your master's degree and get it done. Um, so our two tracks you can do in 14 months, um, which is which is pretty nice to have it accelerated that way. Um, and be open to all the different experiences that you can. We tell our interns that all the time, like if your preceptor asks you to see a complex patient, do it. Like if they if they ask you to like do an extra nutrition education session, do it, get the preceptors are there um, to like pick you up if you fall, right? Like if, if something, you know, to say like, oh, yep, you, you, let's take the counseling session in this direction or that direction, absorb all of that information because the internship will be over before you know it and you're out on your own and you want to get as much knowledge as you can in that period of time. Yeah, and it's definitely, I really like what you said, where it's like, you know, don't fear the unknown, kind of embrace the unknown of what the internship has to offer, because definitely, and honestly, you're not the first program director we've heard say where it's like absorb everything you can, because yeah, it's truly a very, it's one of the most crucial parts of becoming a dietitian, because you're out on the field, but also learning at the same time. And so I think that's a really great note to end on. And thank you so much for talking about your program and talking about your different tracks and also the super unique parts of your program and I'm sure a lot of students will learn about your program and maybe be interested in applying so thank you yeah thank you very much I appreciate it